So I've had a couple requests over the years to do a knot tying video. I put a lot of thought into it and I've come up with a list of five basic important knots that I believe everybody should know. Why do you want to know knots? Well, knots are one of those things that once you know them, you're going to find yourself using them all over the place. Like you go to the store and you buy a Christmas tree, you want to strap it down to your roof. There's a knot for that. You have a rope that you want to tie around a tree and you want to put a lot of force on that rope, but then be able to take that rope apart and untie that knot effortlessly. Well, there's a knot for that too. So without further ado, let's get started. The first knot we're going to learn is something called a bowline. All right, the bowline. First, let's take a look at a properly tied bowline. And now, what is the use of a bowline? Well, the bowline is a special knot in that if you need to wrap this around something and you need to put an enormous amount of force on this rope, like I'll, I'll do that right now. Like I can pull on this knot with all my might. And let's say I'm finished with the rope and I wanna untie this knot. It's pretty much effortless to take this apart. And that's what makes the bowline so useful. It's used a lot commonly in the sailing industry and the arborist industry just because you can put a ton of force on this knot and it's incredibly easy to take apart. Really useful knot. All right, so let me teach you how to tie a bowline. First, I'm gonna to refer to this side of the rope as the working end, and this is the running end of the rope. So the first thing you're gonna do is take the right side of the rope and throw a loop over the left side of the rope. Take the working end of the rope, come from the back side of this loop, come through, go back around the running end of the rope, and then go back out through this loop, and there you go. That is a basic bowline. All right, the next knot I'm gonna teach you is what's called a double figure eight knot. And this is what a double figure eight knot looks like, properly dressed. I think it's pretty self-explanatory as to why it's called the double figure eight knot. But this is the preferred knot for rock climbers and rope rescue teams and maybe sailors, I don't know. But in the rock climbing industry, this is like the number one go-to knot. Here's the reason why. You gotta think of it this way. When you're rock climbing, your life literally depends on the gear. And it also depends on this knot. The beauty of the double figure eight knot, it's extremely easy to tell if the knot is tied properly. If it doesn't look like this, it's not tied properly. You know, when we go rock climbing, I check my knot, and then also the person that, that's belaying me, they also check my knot, and you know, I check their gear as well. So it's extremely easy to tell if this knot is tied incorrectly. Also, I could argue that it's a bit quicker to tie a double figure eight knot than it is to tie a bowline. See, in a matter of five seconds, could be dressed up a little bit, but this is a double figure eight knot, and I can dress this up a little bit just to make it look a little bit neater. But you see, in a matter of five seconds, I can tie a double figure eight knot as with a bowline. I don't know, maybe that takes 10 seconds, so it's a little bit quicker. Now here's the disadvantage of this knot. This knot constricts a bit. So when I take this knot and wrap it around an object and I put some weight on this knot, see how everything constricts? It's now gonna be a bit harder to take this knot apart. But there is a way that you can put a lot of force on this knot without constricting this knot too much. And this is something called a tensionless hitch. And it's used a lot in the rope rescue industry. So basically what you do, you tie your figure eight knot, and then what you do, you take this rope and you wrap it around the object that you wanna, you know, secure your load to. And I can wrap this around as many times as I like, like so. And then what I do from here, you can either take a carabiner and clip the loop on this figure eight back to your working end of the rope, or you can just take the working end of the rope and run it through your figure eight knot like so. And now what happens, of course, you know, normally you wouldn't have an object that rolls, but the friction between the rope and the object that you're tying off from takes most of the force and then you're not putting a lot of force on the knot itself. So like, as I pull on this rope, all the friction between this rope and the object is really what's doing most of the holding power. So now, if I take this off and I try to untie,
this double figure eight, it's going to be a lot easier to untie because the friction between the rope and the object took most of the force. All right, now there are two ways to tie double figure eight knot. We'll go over the first way, which this is the easiest way. So you take your rope, stretch out about two feet. What you're going to want to do, you're going to want to make a loop, but take that loop, bend it down like so, then take this part of the loop, go around the back of the rope, and come back up through this little hole right here, presto. That is a double figure eight knot. And you can just see how easy it is to tell if the knot is tied correctly. And this is a properly tied double figure eight knot. You can always dress it up and make it look a little bit pretty like that, but really simple to tie. So a double figure eight knot is great. But the way I just taught you doesn't teach you how to get this loop through an object. Rock climbers, we like to tie this knot off directly through our nylon harness. But the way I just told you, you're not going to be able to do that. So how do you get something through the loop of this knot? Well, we're going to start off the same way. So first things first, you want to take the working end of the rope, probably take maybe a three foot section of rope, let it hang down and create a loop like so. Take your working end of the rope, wrap it around the back side of the knot from right to left and go up through the knot, hold the rope up high, let that drop. And then, in essence, what you've created is a single eight knot. Pretty simple. And now what you do, take the working end of the rope, and from here you could tie it to your harness or whatever, around whatever object you want to tie off. And then this is pretty simple. All you do is you just retrace the knot. You can slide this knot up and down by taking some of the rope and just working the knot down. Pretty simple. So again, all I'm going to do Let's take the rope and I'm just going to follow it back through. Follow it back through, just follow the outline. And we're out. So that is the second way how to tie a double figure eight knot. And you can easily see that this is a properly tied knot. Next knot I want to teach you is what's called a clove hitch. Now, this is a properly tied clove hitch, but it also has a backup fisherman's knot. And clove hitch is a really handy knot, but it does have its limitations. Like a basic clove hitch like this is great for tying around round objects, but it's something that you can't trust alone if you plan to put extreme forces on this knot. Like I can pull against this knot and I know it's gonna hold tight, like so, and it's also really easy to adjust. Like if I take these two ends of the rope, push against each other, I can slide this knot up and down effortlessly. If I put some downward force on this knot, it's nice and strong. And then also, if I wanna take some of the slack out of this side of the knot, all I do is push this side of the rope through and I pull on this side. And I can adjust you know, the amount of slack in this side of the rope pretty effortlessly. But this knot can fail in that if I apply enough force on this side, this side of the rope could potentially start slipping out like so. So if you plan to put a critical load on a clove hitch, then you want to tie something called a backup knot. And a simple backup knot that you want to tie is just a single or double fisherman's knot and it looks something like that. So in the event, if this rope does start slipping from this side, this safety knot or backup knot will prevent the working end of the rope from running through this knot and having this knot completely fail. It sounds a little complex, but this is still an incredibly useful knot, just not the preferred knot to trust your life or anything critical on. All right, so just like the double figure eight, there are two ways to tie a clove hitch. Now, the first way I'm gonna teach you is how to, I, I call this throwing a clove hitch. So if you have an exposed end of the round object, this is a quick, simple way to tie this clove hitch over this object. So you wanna take your working end of the rope, maybe give yourself about two feet, take the right side of the rope, make a loop over the left side of the rope, and then you wanna do that again 
couple inches down. So you should have two loops that look like this. And now what you wanna do, you wanna take your right loop and put it behind your left loop and then take this whole assembly and slide it down over your round object, then take the two ends of rope and pull it tight. And that is what a clove hitch looks like. And what's great about this is once you get good at this, you can literally throw a clove hitch, you know, three seconds. So that's great. Quick way to tie a clove hitch. All right, so the second way to tie this, if you don't have a way to throw this knot up over the object that you want to tie this off to, it's not that hard, but it, it does take a little bit of practice. So wrap it around the object once, then go beneath that top loop. And then you're gonna to wanna to come right through here and then go between the top and bottom loop. And then when you tie it up, it should look like that. It takes a little bit of practice. Now I'm gonna teach you how to tie the safety knot. I'm gonna teach you how to tie a double fisherman's knot. So what you do, here's the working end of the rope. It's the end of the rope we're working off of, and here's the running end of the rope. Take your thumb and point it in the direction of the running end of the rope. Then take your working end of the rope, wrap it around your thumb once. Then after the first loop, wrap it below that first loop, then come back around, and then simply follow your thumb out. And that is a double fisherman's knot. All right, hopefully I haven't made this too complex, but let's finish up with Jerry's final thought here. So the fisherman's knot, I think it's a great outdoorsman knot. I think it's perfect for hammocks, or if you need to tie a rope between two trees and string a tarp up over that, it's great for that because there's enough friction between trees in this, this knot that it won't slide down. But if you're planning to put loads of over two or 300 pounds on this knot, without question, even if you're doing a hammock, I think it's critical that you tie a safety knot, a, a double fisherman's knot. But again, it's a really useful knot, really easy to tie, really easy to come apart. So again, there's a lot of benefits to this knot, but you need to know when to use this and how to use this properly. The next knot that I wanna teach you is what's called a trucker's hitch. I've actually done a video about this knot in the past. I believe the title of that video was how to tie string tight. And I don't think I did the best job of describing this knot and exactly how to tie it. So in today's video, I'm definitely gonna try and be more descriptive in how to properly tie this knot. But let's go over an application of this knot. So you go to the store and, and you buy something, you throw it in the back of your truck or you buy a Christmas tree and you want to tie it to the top of your car. How do you prevent that load from sliding around if you only have a rope or a piece of string? What is a trucker hitch? How is it used? How is it tied? Well, a trucker's hitch is a very crude block and tackle device made out of a single piece of rope. In essence, you make a series of knots and take the rope and run it through the knots and you make a very crude mechanical advantage pulley type system. So the way you start, first you take the very end of one side of the rope, and what you want to do, you want to make either a double figure eight or a bowline. Because I'm going to reuse this rope, take this knot out, I'm going to tie a bowline. So there we are, we have a bowline on one side of the rope. And then what I do, I take the other side of the rope and I just, you know, pull some of the slack out of there, and I'm just kind of doing a crude estimate, you know, maybe three feet between the bowline and where I'm gonna tie my next knot. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tie double figure eight right here. Again, this is very simple to tie. Just throw a double figure eight in here. All right, so now I have a bowline right there and I have a double figure eight right here. Again, you could use a double figure eight on that side. It does not matter. Now what I'm gonna do The side that I just tied the double figure eight on, there should be a long tail to that side of the rope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that tail, I'm gonna go back over to my bowline, run the rope through the bowline. I'm gonna take the rope, run it through the loop on the double figure eight. And then one more time, I'm gonna take the rope, come back over and I'm gonna run it through the bowline one more time. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling on this, start taking the slack out of this.
Now, after I've gotten all the slack out of the system, basically what I've created is a very crude three to one pulley system. I say crude because although this is a three to one pulley system, we do lose a bit of our pulling power from friction between the rope when it runs over the loop. You know, if you had a ball bearing pulley, every time the rope, you know, made a bend, this would be a much more efficient system and we could put a lot more tension on this knot. But as it stands right now, I can still get a good bit of mechanical advantage and I can make a pretty darn tight knot. Here's a really cool trick you can do with your trucker's hitch to turn it into an auto locking hitch, meaning that it, it basically becomes a progress capturing device. So as I pull this end of the rope to make this hitch tighter, it'll automatically lock off the progress, which is great. So what you do on the bowling side of the hitch, you want to take the end of the rope that you're pulling on to tighten up this hitch, take this and put it underneath the first loop you put through the bowling side. And basically what happens now, as I pull on this knot, the friction between the rope that I'm pulling on and the first loop around this knot basically locks off the rope. So I could keep yanking on this and I can put a lot of force and you can see this knot starting to get pretty tight and this just keeps locking itself off. So I have a lot of tension on this knot right now and my load is pretty darn secure. Now, if you wanted to finish off this knot, all you do is just tie a half hitch, something like that, you know, do a couple overhand knots, whatever, and that's not going anywhere. But if you want to take this knot apart now, all you do is take out your half hitches or your securing knots and simply take the rope, put it back through the loop and just pull it up and you can relieve all the tension on this system. Pretty darn cool hitch to know. Trucker's hitch, this is definitely one of those knots that once you learn, you will find yourself using this knot all the time. Definitely one of the most useful knots I know, or hitches, whatever you wanna call it. All right, the final knot I'm gonna go over is something called a Prussix hitch. Prussix knot, whatever you wanna call it. When you're doing a Prussix hitch, it's important that the Prussix cord is between 60 and 80% of the diameter of the main line you're tying this knot to. The reason being is if I tried to tie a Prussix hitch with the same diameter as this main piece of rope, it's not gonna catch. So this is basically a friction knot. And the great thing about this is it's really easy to adjust. All I do is just loosen up on the knot a little bit and with one finger, I can slide this knot anywhere along the rope and then when I want to lock this down I just pull on this loop and I've created in turn a simple anchoring point now that's not to say you don't want to use this for like your main belay anchoring point but say you tie a trucker's hitch on your trailer and you want another spot on that already taut trucker's hitch where you can tie off another tie down or throw a bungee cord or something like that if you carry a little piece of cordage like this and you make a prussix hitch you can tie off anywhere along that line without um, loosening up that trucker's hitch and you know making another knot in the rope. So this is a really handy knot for that. Uh, if you have any lines hanging from any trees, stuff like that, and you just want something hanging from that line, it's great for that. So it really does have a lot of uses. One of the main uses of a Prussix hitch uh, for rock climbing is this actually becomes a self-rescue knot. So say, you know, you're rappelling down and you get all jammed up. You're repel device, you know, the, the, the main line gets all jammed up in there. What you can do, you can tie a Prussix hitch above your repel device. You can pick yourself up. You can step on this cord, pull your weight up off that belay device. You can correct the issue, then lower yourself back down, and then you can continue on your way. So really important in the rock climbing and arborist industry, rope rescue. But again, you can use this knot literally anywhere you set your mind to. Great for just setting an anchor anywhere on a piece of rope. Again, not a belay anchor, but just a tie-down anchor. Something you want to hang your backpack off of. You want to tie a hammock up. Great for that. 
All right, so how do you tie a Prussix knot? Well, the first thing you need is a piece of Prussix cord, which this is, you know, standard cordage, which is, you know, obviously smaller than the diameter of your main working line. And this is just closed loop, so there are two triple fisherman's knots that are just opposed to each other, so that, you know, locks this off. But basically how you tie a Prussix knot is you take your cordage, you go around the rope and then through the loop here once, at least twice. You know, of course, if you're a rope rescue guy and, you know, you're rescuing yourself and a victim, then you're going to want to do this three times. I think it's, what, two for self, three, no, two for me, three for we. I think that's how that saying goes, but uh, that's just a simple Prussix knot. And the great thing again about this knot is one finger I can slide this, or well two fingers, one finger up or down the rope and then whenever I want to lock this off just pull on this loop and it is locked off in either direction. Great knot to know. Alright so now I'm going to teach you how to tie two triple fisherman's knots opposing each other on a single piece of rope so you can make a Prussix cord. I was gonna do this with the small rope, but I figured it'd probably be easier for you to see what's going on with the larger rope here. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna take the two ends of the rope and you wanna cross them over each other. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna point it in the direction of the first knot that I'm gonna tie. So this is the end of the rope. I'm gonna point it in this direction while holding both ropes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rope I'm gonna wrap it around my thumb once. Then I'm gonna come behind the first loop, wrap it around my thumb twice. Finally, a third time, I'm gonna come back around one more time. I'm gonna follow my thumb out like so. Pull tight, and that is a triple fisherman's knot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rope, you see the one one rope still slides through the knot effortlessly because we have not made our second knot. So I'm just going to turn the rope 180 degrees. So same thing, I'm going to make sure I have enough rope to tie my triple fisherman's, wrap it around once, go behind the first loop, here's my second one, go around a third time. I'm just going to come from the back and follow my thumb out of the knot, like so. Pull that tight. That's what it should look like. And then if I pull on the two non-tied ends of the rope, that'll cinch together like so. And there we have two triple fisherman's knots. And that is basically how you make a Prussix cord. Hopefully you guys got a lot of good information out of this video. Once you learn these knots, I promise you, you're going to find yourself using these knots all over the place. The best thing you can do is if you want to learn and you want to keep proficient with your knot tying abilities, keep a five or six foot piece of rope with you maybe in your car. So, you know, if you're sitting in the parking lot waiting to pick somebody out, just start tying knots. You're bored at home at the dinner table. Just start practicing tying knots. There's a lot of good applications out there for your iPhones and Androids. I think a lot of them are free as well. So, you know, download them. Just start practicing because, again, I guarantee you, once you know these knots and you know their proper application, you'll find yourself using them all over the place. So, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.